Hello guys, I've been following Tanya Gant and her art for many years. She's one of the top hyperrealist colored pencil artists working today. Every time I open social media, I see yet another major award taken by the artist. I think Tanya collects them all like candy on Halloween. But in all seriousness, Tanya's drawings mesmerize me with their unique point of view, perfection of forms, and beauty I see in people she draws so perfectly. In the first part of our conversation, the artist discusses the techniques of colored pencil drawing, including art supplies. The second part of the interview is all about Tanya's motivation, inspiration and storytelling. She also shares how she lived in and left Bosnia for the US. Uh, enjoy the show! Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and share it with your friends. Thanks so much, guys. It's such a pleasure to meet you here, Tanya. Thank you for having me. Uh, my first question would be about colored pencils them, themselves. Like what brands do you use? Like what are your favorite? And tell me the reason why. Well, I have several uh, brands that I use. The brand of colored pencil that I use most is uh, Karen Dash Luminance. Mm -hmm. I recently discovered, and I think they're new on the market, uh, Holbein artist colored pencils. Okay, I've never used uh -huh. those. I have no idea. Are, uh, are they yeah, similar they're, to Luminance? They're uh, closer to Faber Castell. Oh, like okay. okay. Uh, but they're really awesome. I mean, I really love them. And you can, what I like most about all these brands that I use is you can get them uh, open stock. Mm hmm. Uh, because, you know, not many people can afford full sets of colored pencils. Mm -hmm. Then there's, there, there went Color Soft and Light Fest, uh, and then Create a Color, Mega Color. Wow. They're these huge colored pencils. I mean, they're really fat, uh, really, really creamy. Okay. Uh, I think they just started selling them open stock as well. Okay. Uh, and then there's Prisma Colors. The reason uh, Ka uh, Karen Dash Luminance uh, is my favorite brand, do what I want them to do. I mean, I love their colors. Mm -hmm. They're kind of, I call them chalky, mm -hmm. uh, a little drier. Um, and they play really well with other brands. Are they soft? Uh, do they have a lot a lot of pigment? Or... Holbein? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Oh. Yes, they're creamier than I. I think they're creamier than Luminance, oh, and wow. they have some really awesome colors too. Okay, are they light fast? I, uh, I want to say they are. I mean, if I'm correct, they're brand new on the market, so there's not much information I can get mm -hmm. on light fastness about them. Mm -hmm. But with that name, I mean, okay, I can only assume. I have like three questions from Jessica Young. She left them on Facebook. So I'm going to ask them one by one. Okay. <laughs> so we don't forget about the rest of them. Her first question is, what are the paper types have you been using? Do you stick with the same types or do you still keep trying new, new types? Well, first of all, hi, Jessica. And thank you for asking. <laughs> um, I used to work uh, exclusively on Strathmore Bristol Smooth, mm -hmm. uh, the 300 series. But then I discovered uh, papers that had a little more texture mm -hmm. and produced uh, drawings that were or are more vibrant. So now I'm kind of, uh, you know, slowly switching to textured paper, mm -hmm. but I don't, I still don't have a brand of paper that I absolutely love. I mean, I will try, if I uh, come across anything new, I will definitely try it. Okay. 
I, I don't, I don't understand how, how you draw on Bristol smooth. This is like, whenever I try, it's just not the same. The colored pencil doesn't layer uh, as well. well. Smooth paper has its um, disadvantages. Uh, you can get a lot more detail, but only so many layers. Yeah, so I find that the colors on smooth paper are not as vibrant mm -hmm. as color pencil on textured paper. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I, I discovered it by chance. Bristol Smooth, um, and I normally use the 300 series, which is semi-transparent. Okay. Uh, which means um, if I want to see if the drawing is correct i can just turn it around and look at you know look at it against the light and uh -huh. instead of using a mirror uh-huh vellum has a little more texture mm -hmm. which i prefer because you know it you can still get a lot of detail but it takes a little longer mm -hmm. um but i think the colors are brighter mm -hmm. uh, and, and you can layer more mm -hmm. on vellum. And then I realized that, you know, I, I'm not just, I'm not getting that, that punch of color, you know, that I want mm -hmm. or the dark darks. And so I said, well, why not try something different? And I now I'm kind of switching to vellum mostly. Okay. So uh, but, Basically, your favorite uh, paper is Bristol vellum. Or you um, have something not really else. Bristol. I mean, you know, I'll, you know, if I hear that somebody's using a new kind of paper or mm -hmm. um, I see it somewhere, I'll order it. Usually, in single sheets. Mm -hmm. Just try it, and um, you know, see how it goes. Have you tried drawing on sanded paper like you are? No, 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 not yet. I have it, but I haven't. This is so different. And um, the first time I tried them, I was so frustrated because it acted like paper for pastels. You know, you lay mm -hmm. colors differently and you blend them differently. So I was wondering if you tried using. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, I know people complain about that paper eating up pencils like yeah crazy. yeah which you know if you get the result mm -hmm. that you want is worth it but i think you have to use uh, certain tools mm -hmm. to blend the color pencils to achieve that mm -hmm. result and i don't use any tools except for the color pencils so you don't use any kind of blenders no. So your think. blending comes from very tight shading. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Shading and different pressure. Mm -hmm. on the okay, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica also asked about burnishing. So do you do any burnishing at all? I do um, if I feel necessary to do it. Uh, usually in the darkest darks where I, and because I'm using vellum paper, you know, mm -hmm. chances are the paper will still show through. Mm -hmm. uh, but where I want the darkest darks, I really push on that pencil and, you know, try to burnish it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, usually with a local co color or whatever the darkest color is. Okay. So I'm guessing you don't use any solvents. No. Okay, why not? You know, <laughs> to me, it's all about control. And I have this feeling that if I use blender tools or mm -hmm. um, solvents, I would lose control of what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. I just <laughs> don't want do to go there. <laughs> I, I can't do that. No, not yet. <laughs> And, and, you know, it's, there's so many people out there who use them and they create these mm -hmm. pieces. And I'm just, 
Mm-hmm. Amazed. You do need to use uh, some sort of of a blender on your paper, for instance, the one that looks like a sandpaper. But Bristol Vellum works so well, shading without any kind of um, blenders. So that's yeah. a good thing. I mean, I, I don't think you need blending tools mm-hmm. on vellum paper. It just takes a little longer. Mm-hmm. I know people use them to uh, speed up the process. Let's discuss how you start your drawing, looking at the technique first. Do you do a sketch or do you create an outline drawing that you transfer? Or is there any other way of you know, starting a drawing? I uh, use the grid system. Uh, you know, I'll take a picture and mm-hmm. print it. And I print it on just a regular copy paper, mm-hmm. which is what, nine, oh, eight by 11 mm-hmm. inches. And I'll grid the photo and then decide what size I want the drawing to be and then increase it by uh, one and a half to two and a half, maybe three times. And then I'll grid the paper, the drawing paper, mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, hand draw the outlines. But it does speed up the process for me. And I started using it really not that long ago. I used to freehand everything and it would take me days mm-hmm. just to, you know, get the image on paper. Um, but it's not completely like safe. You can't rely on the grid Mm -hmm. to be completely true um, because you will make mistakes and I make them all the time. So you have to be aware of that. Because you use the grid, uh, you have to place the grid on your drawing paper. What kind Mm -hmm. of pencil do you use? I use a regular um, uh, HB mechanical. Pencil. What's surprising to me is that those lines don't interfere with the shading that you do later on. You, you know, those graphite lines become a lot darker when you shade. I erase. I mean, number one, I don't push on the graphite pencil mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I'm ready to start putting down color, mm-hmm. I will erase the lines to the point where I can hardly see them. Okay. They're just guides. I mean, you know, I, mm-hmm. like I said, I cannot rely on each line to be perfectly correct. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I will look at my reference photo during the whole drawing process mm-hmm. as I'm laying down the color to mm-hmm. make sure that, you know, the lines are where they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to me, it doesn't matter if I can see the, the outlines or not really mm-hmm. I mean they're just there to okay you know start the process and I really would encourage people to uh if they're using the grid system and I know some find it difficult uh it's a crutch it's just a crutch so try to rely on the reference photo what you're seeing you know compare look at you're drawing in a reference photo all the time and step back and look at what you, what's happening on the paper. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, because if you're too close to your drawing, which, you know, you are most of the time, I mean, you lose sight of the big picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do, do you use your, fo- you know, photo reference as a printout or do you draw from a monitor? Actually, I use both. Uh, the printout I do in black and white because, you know, I can't get the colors perfect mm-hmm. on copy paper, so I don't rely on them. I use that simply for the grid and the uh, values. I work off of my laptop, which is usually positioned at a 90 degrees to my left (laughs) so (laughs) I'm always like this and I don't know if that's the right way to do it but that I believe trains me 
to really pay attention to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, because if you're uh, looking at a photo reference that's right next to your drawing or your painting, you know, it's kind of like easy to do it that way. Mm -hmm. But if you, have to, if you have to look this way, you know, all the time, if you're not looking at that reference photo right in front of you to compare to your drawing, you have to like, okay, where is that line supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Is it in the correct spot? So like, I have to remember, you know, it's that muscle memory. Like, okay, so it's supposed to be here. I need to lower it or I need to raise it. So okay, I, I try to make it hard on myself, but that's just my way of kicking my own ass. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do what I do. <laughs> uh, your models have a very unique angle or point of view um, in your drawings. How do you set up your models uh, do you ever draw from life or it's always picture taking first unfortunately it's always from photo references mm -hmm. simply because you know nobody would be willing to sit that long for me mm -hmm. to actually finish a color pencil drawing i mean it may take me up to a month yeah it's a very um, time consuming medium yeah. as opposed yeah, to I mean, painting yeah especially because um you know, I take it as far as I can. I want it to be, to look like a finished drawing, mm -hmm. not a sketch. Well, explain the setup. How do you find uh, that Well, angle? you know, it depends. Uh, most of my photo shoots are spontaneous. Uh, they're usually my friends, family, mm -hmm. uh, people who know what I do so <laughs> they're not weirded out by it um I've talked to several people who I didn't know and <laughs> said you know I would love to draw you <laughs> here's my business card and you know take a look and mm -hmm. let me know how you feel about it. I never hear from them I if I have an idea of what I want to draw then I'll set them up I usually don't require any special outfits costumes and, and how, how do you come up with the idea like what's the idea <laughs> oh the idea you know actually the other day I came up with one I don't even know how I mean it just I think I heard this word in a song and I'm like okay. you know what? that that would be a good concept so sometimes you know I'll read something in a book or hear something in a song or I'll just What's the concept? Okay, can you explain, like, what's the co concept of your current project? A portrait of a gentleman that I met recently. Okay. I want people to see who these people are. And I don't know if it comes out okay. every time, but I want to, in this case, I want to honor the person that he is. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's the concept. That, that that's means. mainly the concept, yes. And that's, yeah. you know. You know, I found out about him and I, uh, he's a wonderful person and really interesting. And I uh, said, you know, I would really love to draw you. And, you know, I said, just give me your personality. And I think I achieved that. Okay. It sounds like you're interested in the character of a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what you're trying to communicate. Not not every time. Okay. But if I see a person that or meet a person that's really, really interesting mm -hmm. and special, then yes, that that would be the focus of the piece. But sometimes um they're self-portraits, even though I they don't portray me. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'll use other people to tell my stories mm -hmm. actually most of the time mm -hmm. I think that's oh. what artists do <laughs> yes. I see something something of them mm -hmm. in the people and then it mm -hmm. becomes art yeah yeah sometimes I'll be sneaky about it and you know 
um, when I'm done with a drawing, you know, I'm, I do a portrait of, let's say my stepson. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of me in it. Mm -hmm. Like what and part? I, maybe, I don't know, the colors or the look mm -hmm. in the eyes or, you know, the, I can't explain it. Or maybe part of a character. A baby, yes. Most of the time, nobody knows it, but you know, I'll finish the drawing, and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> oh, that that's me too." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes when I paint, I'm not sure what I'm I'm painting, but by the time it it gets finished, meaning kind of sinks in. Uh -huh. Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing until it's done. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I do sometimes too. Yeah, and other times I begin drawing from a very specific idea. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking because it's really interesting how you uh, come up with ideas mm -hmm. or what you like showing in your drawings. Sometimes I, I want to tell my story, mm -hmm. even though, you know, like uh, 1992 is a self-portrait, mm -hmm. uh, although it features my stepson. Okay. I had a very precise idea of how I wanted it to look. Mm -hmm. But other times, you know, I'll just see somebody interesting and say, hey, will you pose for me? And they're kind enough to do it. Sometimes it's, it's all about the light. Sometimes it, it's about the color, mm -hmm. uh, personality. It really changes. What camera do you use and how do you uh, set up a model? Do you ask for a specific pose or do you wait for the pose to unravel? Well, number one, I use my iPhone. Okay. That's the only camera I have. <laughs> as far as posing my models, uh, if I know exactly what I want, then yes, mm -hmm. I'll pose them. Normally, I would say, hey, just be yourself. Uh, in which case they're, because they're not professional models, they're pretty uncomfortable um, with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll take a few pictures until they loosen up and until I get the one that I like. And I don't take tons of pictures, mm -hmm. uh, maybe up to 20. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, but I try to get that, I don't know if I should call it perfect, photo mm -hmm. immediately so I don't have to mess with it on Photoshop mm -hmm. because I don't know how <laughs> <laughs> okay um do you but, you know but but when it comes to like backgrounds and, and little details like that I will change them myself you know I don't I don't know how to work Photoshop so mm -hmm. I'll just change the colors or get rid of the unnecessary background noise mm-hmm so. Do you prefer taking pictures outside or inside? It depends on the light. So there or is no, uh, mm -hmm. no preference. Okay. No. I really have to um, jump on it when somebody's uh, willing and ready to pose. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's very spontaneous. Um, I have a Next question from Jessica. Well, her last question is that um, what do you find easy and what do you find still challenging in creating art at this point of your career? You know, I keep telling myself what I do is really easy. Anybody can do it. But at the same time, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's, it's far from hard. being easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very not easy. Mm -hmm. um, challenging, you know, sometimes it's picking that right, picking the next project. Mm -hmm. I have uh, several photo references that I could work from right now, mm -hmm. but then I get ideas all the time and I, um, all over the place. So I never know what I'm gonna draw next. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's usually deciding on what colors to use. Are you serious? For me, yeah. What do you mean what colors? You see them in, in the picture. Yeah, but I don't, I try not to copy the photo reference exactly. Okay. You know, I, especially the colors, because they may be too bright. Okay. They may not convey the emotion or the, uh, you know, they may not convey what I want to say. Like this drawing that I'm working on now, uh, when I look at it on uh, my laptop, everything's so bright and mm -hmm. too much of it. And I'm like, I need to tone it down. So instead of fixing the reference photo on my laptop, I actually do it on my drawing as I go. I see. So that makes it a little bit more difficult because I have to pay attention to the values and the temperatures and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And if I um, decide to go with a different a color, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that makes it a, a lot more difficult. So I, you know, there's a lot to keep in mind. Okay. So colors, yes, uh, choosing the right colors and actually making sure that I don't make mistakes because I do, you know, you, you can come to the end of it, you know, work on the background, which I leave for the last part. Uh, you get to the last part and you make a mistake that you cannot fix and you're done. Mm -hmm. And you worked on it for weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's always in the back of my mind. Yeah, you cannot click on a button saying no. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just go over it and um, mm -hmm. pretend it was never there. <laughs> So that that's you know the easy part. I I feel relieved when I sign it. Okay. You know by by then I'm I'm ready to just be done with it, mm -hmm. and I sign it and I'll look at it. Well, actually I'll look at it for a few days before I sign it just to make sure that you know everything's correct. Your drawings are so perfect. This tells me that you are a perfectionist. I am. Yeah. Well, I try to be. <laughs> it can be annoying, but yes. Describe how you educated yourself to draw so well. Are you self-taught at all? or Yes, I am 100% self-taught. Which is totally amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't even say that I was, I taught myself. I mean, I just didn't know what I was doing. I just did it. Uh, I literally started drawing as soon as I could hold a pencil. And I drew cartoon characters and, uh, you know, stuff like that. And I think in high school, I figured I could, you know, why not draw portraits like people? Mm -hmm. And once I started, I never went back. Uh, you know, I always ask myself how I could do it better. Mm -hmm. You know, if the eyes were not right, like I would look at it and say, okay, well, this eye is higher, so it needs to go lower. Or if the, and the values always kind of aggravated me because I, I, back then I didn't have quality pencils, so I could never get the dark, mm -hmm. those really rich darks. Mm -hmm. I know I, it, it could go darker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that's what I focused on and mainly until I started working in colored pencil. And I mean, I just did it. And okay, I, like when um, you said you started drawing in high school, right? When I started drawing people Me, in high school, yes. People in high school. Uh, did you take uh, an art class? Was it available in, in high school? No, no it, <laughs> I was growing up in post Second World War at Yugoslavia mm -hmm. back then. And um, 
all the work was either modern or that socialist. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very time. familiar with that. Yes. <laughs> Coming and, from the Soviet and, Union. Yes. And I'm like, that's not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And in art class, which we did have in elementary school, they would say, well, draw me a tree or draw, I don't know, a landscape or draw mm -hmm. me a sun. And uh, I, I was never like intrigued. By, you know, I just didn't care about that. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, I started drawing people. And that in high school is when we started learning uh, art theory and about okay. artists. And I'm like, okay. Okay, so <laughs> you, you did have you did have uh, an official art education in, in school, right? Well, yeah, I mean, we had okay. an art class. Okay, art class. Because uh, I, I'm asking because I didn't like it wasn't really? included into the system of public I'm, education. I'm I'm really surprised. Yeah, yeah. It like art school was uh, set up separate from oh. uh, basic, you know, public school education. That's why I'm asking. Like, I want to understand oh. if it's different or the same. Yeah, uh, yeah, we had it, but we didn't learn anything. Uh, well, yeah, I that's mean, I, the story, I mean, but... growing up, I knew I was, uh, I drew best of all my peers, mm -hmm. but that was it. Okay. You know, everybody knew me as, you know, oh, that girl who can draw well, mm -hmm. and that was it. But no, absolutely no education, no learning. Fantastic. And, and, and so Done. what did you do after high school? Well, when I uh, was about to graduate from high school, I dreamed for about a five minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I wanted to go to um, an art college, mm -hmm. art academy. Okay. I grew up in Zanitsa, which is an um, industrial town in kind of central Bosnia. Okay. And the art school was about a, an hour away. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of research to see if I actually could. And uh, quickly realized that I was not what they were looking for because I drew a realism. Mm -hmm. All they wanted was expression, you know, self-expression, modern art, and, mm -hmm. you know, just throw some uh, paint on the canvas mm -hmm. type of art. And then I learned that they would only take maybe five people every year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's no way. I mean, I don't have connections and I don't have the money. So mm -hmm. I studied English instead. <laughs> so yeah, that was my... It's five minutes of dreaming about being a you know mm -hmm. a legitimate artist yeah you talk about the limitations um, that we had in the eastern europe you know in europe in general as opposed to um, american school because what americans don't realize is that how many opportunities they have and they pass them by not appreciating yes. the fact that it's super difficult uh, to do what you want. Uh, you know, at least it was the, the fact for me and it looks like it was the fact for you mm -hmm. that there were other things and circumstances that uh, limited you mm -hmm. in, in pursuing your passion basically what they don't understand is that there are circumstances that will that are self-imposed most of the time at least in this country mm -hmm. that will prevent you from doing what mm -hmm. you love but sometimes uh the circumstances since the circumstances don't exist mm -hmm. you know for example when i uh graduated from high school you know the war um broke out and that was it mm -hmm. for me so even 
uh, studying English ended. So that wasn't even an option. I mean, I really didn't have any any options at the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I keep thinking, you know, people here, uh, sometimes all they have to do is get out and do it mm-hmm. or sit down and do it. Mm-hmm. Get um, rid of uh, limiting yeah. beliefs and just yeah. like doing it as opposed yeah. to not be able to do it even if you really want to. Yeah, sometimes you just don't have that option at yeah. all. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, and, and I do uh, sometimes use excuses not to do it, but mm-hmm. not having the right pencil or not having the right paper mm-hmm. or not having the right model to draw is not an excuse. Right. Tell us about the war a little bit and how it changed you and maybe how you moved from Bosnia to the U.S.? Before the war, we had a normal, happy, what I would call middle class life. Mm -hmm. Um, We could go everywhere and do whatever we wanted to do. And then one day, it literally all changed. Mm-hmm. And it took me a while to um, get used to the idea. It didn't feel like, you know, it, it, now I'm thinking about it. It was felt like a punch in the gut mm-hmm. by Mike Tyson. It didn't feel like that, in, you know, two, three months after the fact. But once I realized that there was no going back, you know, we lost everything. We literally walked out the door, locked the apartment, and never went back. Uh, lost everything. Do you mean your entire family walked out or just you? My parents, my brother and I, yes. Okay, so all of you walked out. Yes, and okay. we were lucky because uh, we were on our way to celebrate a uh, uh, holiday mm-hmm. at my grandparents' farm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that weekend, the roads between my grandparents' farm and my hometown closed. And so I had to adjust (laughs) to the new life, Mm -hmm. but I literally lost everything and my friends, the life that I knew how much time did did you spend on the farm i think we spent two three months on the farm until we found uh, an empty house Mm -hmm. in town which is about 20 minutes away and we moved in how did you meet your husband how did you relocate (laughs) well after the war um i had to get a job. Mm -hmm. So I did all kinds of things until I got my first gig with an international um, organization, Mm -hmm. uh, which was the OSC. And then in Bosnia, you mean? Yes. Yes. Uh, And I was, uh, I believe, uh, admin back then. And then moved to another one, was an interpreter, and then moved to another one, which is where I met my husband. And he was, we were part of this human rights office. Okay. In Doboy in Bosnia. So I was uh, the interpreter for that office and okay. he was my boss. <laughs> okay. So we worked together for a year and mm-hmm. then your English was pretty good, I assume, since you worked as a as an interpreter. My English was not as good as it is now, and now it's still not as good as I want it to be. But yeah, I mean, it was good enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of work did you do together? Well, we did pretty much everything, uh, human rights related 
um, we worked a lot with a local, uh, the local police, local prisons, uh, refugees, um, sometimes worked on elections and stuff like that. We tried to make sure that everything was right, done right. I'm not like an understanding like what exactly did you do <laughs> like did you do... <laughs> well i translated <laughs> you are oh, you're specifically okay. yes okay all right good enough <laughs> <laughs> yes now i get it <laughs> let me let me just say i couldn't do it now why because um back then i was translating literally uh -huh. now i think about what i'm saying especially when i talk to my mom for example you know i have to think about it <laughs> why well you know it's different like like russian and english oh i see you know they don't you, you have to they don't necessarily translate literally mm -hmm. word word mm -hmm. so where is your family are they back home or they mm -hmm. live back home okay yeah they're all back home do you go back often not as often as i would like okay why not well you know we move just about every two or three years um then money time mm -hmm. corona <laughs> there's always something okay i see when I look at your website, you separate your drawings um, in three categories, colored pencil, charcoal, mm -hmm. graphite. Mm -hmm. Explain how you pick the medium. Uh, why don't you work in just colored pencil? Why do you like working in black and white as well? Uh, number one, I've always been intrigued by black and white. The greater the um, value shift, the better. To me, it adds mystery. Mm -hmm. And there's just something about black and white that uh, makes you focus on either the specific um, detail or the person mm -hmm. where the color kind of distracts from that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all these other things to look at. Mm -hmm. um, I really, really, really love black backgrounds on if I'm working with graphite or charcoal. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, you know, graphite is the first medium. Okay. I mean, that's how I learn how to draw. Mm -hmm. So it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, and I use it, and I don't know if that's the <laughs> right reason to, to use charcoal or graphite, but I'll use it usually between colored pencil drawings just to kind of um, get rid of all that thinking that goes into colored pencil drawing. You know, you, all you have to worry about is values. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it... It is easier because you have to control values in color and it becomes a challenge sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I also think that uh, working in graphite or, or charcoal is a great way to train mm -hmm. yourself to see the values and to learn how to control your pressure. Yeah, that's the stepping stone to that drawing is, for me color. Is, yes. Yeah, and I really encourage everyone if you have time, mm -hmm. and I know people don't usually have time to just sit and draw mm -hmm. and work on their, you know, drawings that they want to show to the people. But it, you know, it if you have five minutes to sit down and uh, just draw anything you see in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, in plain pencil and just practice your pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what people ask me the most. Like, how do I get that, uh, the smooth look without blending? 
or without mm -hmm. rubbing or without using solvents. That's how, and I've been doing it for a long time. What inspires you to work on portraits? People. People. <laughs> Mostly. But what is it in people? What kind uh, of character are you looking for? Well, you know, I really believe that every, everyone is interesting and everyone is special and everyone has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. It's just the people that I meet or am surrounded by that are closest to me that are willing to pose. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that, you know, any group of people like young, pretty, old, or female, male are more interesting than others. Mm -hmm. I would be willing to draw anyone, mm -hmm. really. And like I said, everyone's special. So it's, it's really about people and also, you know, me trying to say there's something about them or myself. I think when, when, whenever we um, paint people, we want to share a part of ourselves in that person. So what do you want to share? What's your story? Um, sometimes it's um, my attitude. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's uh, that word that I heard in a song or read in a book mm -hmm. that resonated with me. Um, sometimes, like I said, it's about the color. You know, and no matter, you, no matter what you do, how bright or dark the painting or the drawing is, there's always a part of you in it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to explain. Well, it's, I think it's, it's good to try. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, it's hard to pinpoint that specific mm -hmm. thing because each right. drawing is different. And, you know, sometimes I like to leave it unspoken, you know, let other people decide uh, how they feel about it. I think what's interesting is that art is a language of communication, but it is unspoken. It becomes an emotion that we communicate. At, at the same time, not everyone sees that emotion, or maybe uh, there are other times when people do see uh, the ideas and emotions, and you just never know uh, if it's going to connect or not. You but truly never do know. Uh, it's a means of self-expression. Yes. And, you know, sometimes um, you have a drawing that you're really proud of and it, you connect to it on a very deep level and you put it out there and, and then... No one notices. No, it's like, nobody's like, excited <laughs> about it, like... <laughs> why <laughs> yeah. and you know sometimes people just need uh, explanation and i i don't know that that's necessary every time mm -hmm. sometimes i don't even like my title to to explain what the drawing is about mm -hmm. No, I, I get this, but it, it turns out that people do need the explanation. Yeah, they do. I mean, you know, some people are literal and I, I can be literal too, mm -hmm. uh, which is okay. But it's just, I sometimes don't feel like explaining myself. Mm -hmm. Not like that, you know. Sometimes I feel like if I wanted to do that, I would write a book. <laughs> or write songs <laughs> very good point yeah very I, you good know point. I kind of like to leave something 
uh, to imagination. Mm -hmm. Unspoken. Yeah. W what's your favorite drawing that you've done? Oh God. Oh, there's a there's a few that I'm really proud of that I look at and think I uh, I can't believe I did this. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say the one that I'm that I love the most probably is uh, uh, the first time I met you, the one that's on the homepage of my okay website of my okay. niece when she was about two and a half. Oh, okay. The little girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me what you love about it. Oh, the attitude. <laughs> <laughs> to me. See, I think <laughs> most most of your drawings are about the attitude. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, to me, it's... I, I don't, I don't want to say it's all about attitude, but... Mm -hmm most of the time it's about attitude <laughs> and in, in that drawing she has like a ton of it mm -hmm. and she she was only two and a half and she's so cute mm. obviously it's a very beautiful drawing the range of uh, you know soft skin tones and and the uh, facial expression like relaxed say, uh, facial expression but at the same time yeah she, she does show the attitude <laughs> <laughs> i encourage everyone who poses for me please show me the attitude not necessarily you know like a uh, negative attitude but mm -hmm. show me yourself mm -hmm. Okay, what's another drawing that you love? You know, when I say uh, favorite, I think, which one am I most proud of? I want to say, oh, uh, Queen in Training. Just the fact that I could actually do that <laughs> <laughs> with charcoal. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a super realistically drawn uh, face of a young black woman. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And again, it shows a lot of attitude. Yes. And she, you know, I met her briefly just one day. And the light that that young girl mm -hmm. shines with and amazing just amazing i think by uh like i'm trying to understand what you mean by attitude you know because it sounds a little bit negative uh, yes the, the word itself <laughs> yeah and i'm like looking at your art i'm thinking not the attitude but confidence <laughs> yes is it right yes. or not yes okay. yes yes that's because, because you uh it looks like you you are trying to express uh confidence as mm -hmm. opposed to just uh, attitude mm -hmm. yes okay is there anything else to that or <laughs> <laughs> i kind of focus on confidence mainly because um trying to prove to myself that I have it, mm -hmm. that I can do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like if I draw someone that's that confident and, and maybe by the time I'm done with it, you know, I'll kind of absorb some of the confidence. <laughs> Well, do you consider yourself know. being a confident person? Or, I or no. I want I want to say that I am. Okay. But not all the time. Okay. You know, sometimes I have to tell myself, yeah, I mean, you can do mm -hmm. it. Stop being foolish. Mm -hmm. You know, I I tend to try really hard to talk myself out of 
doing things mm -hmm. and then i'll say you know and then the attitude you, kicks in and then yeah you know, <laughs> the attitude and say you okay you're old enough number one to know better and um you know if, if you do it it'll only get better how do you motivate yourself to keep going uh to reach new level i try um to push myself and do something a little different every time as far as uh, motivating myself to actually do something mm -hmm. i drag myself sometimes to the studio and, and make myself sit in the chair and draw mm -hmm. you know nothing else works Mm -hmm. you know what they say about waiting for inspiration it won't come mm -hmm. so you have to create it um but to to actually grow and get better at what I do I either try to use different colors or uh maybe work on a, a bigger drawing or a uh, different composition or include uh different textures mm -hmm. or punch up the values or you know something like that which none of it is comes easy to me because i am not mm -hmm. trained are you set on drawing one figure only or there would be a point when you combine two or three uh people together in one i you know i would love to i just haven't or you really? think it would be too difficult to... No, no. You know, I don't think difficulty has anything to do with it. Um, it's just coming up with an idea that would include two or more people mm -hmm. in a drawing. You know, it's, it's what I want to say. I think about it sometimes, uh, but I just don't have that a uh, specific image okay yet mm -hmm. uh but when it comes to difficulty no mm -hmm. i see what you're saying me, yeah to me drawing uh people or drawing uh, animals or flowers is the same mm -hmm. only uh, drawing people is more difficult because you have to be precise well because, yeah because but, when we draw flowers you can be off beat big time yes. no one would notice but if you miss just a tiny bit in yes. the eye oh but yeah that's... everyone is gonna banish you for that see that's an excuse because <laughs> uh and um this is something that i uh also learned very recently uh the meaning of the phrase you have to learn how to see mm -hmm. You know, back growing up, I would hear it and I'm like, what do you mean? I have to learn how to see. I can see mm -hmm. just fine. That question also, you know, was in my mind and I couldn't yes. understand that. Or like, uh, you have to see the light. What what the hell do you mean? <laughs> well, and and uh I refer to specifically uh the uh precision, you know, getting in, uh right. Mm -hmm uh to me you know seeing uh if you know how to draw a face you should know how to draw a flower mm -hmm. uh or anything else for that matter um hands for example people have uh issues with mm -hmm. something i don't do hardly ever is draw from life mm -hmm. and i believe that's very important mm -hmm. to uh, learning how to see. I did a lot of uh, drawing from life many years ago. And as I kept uh, growing, just my process evolved. And obviously, because we uh, draw and paint from, you know, draw and paint portraits, we uh, have to rely on photography. But the basic skill is in understanding how to see things from from life 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And I do understand that people don't usually have time for that. Mm -hmm. I encourage it, even though I don't do it much, really. Every once in a while, I'll draw something from life just to uh, prove to myself that I can. Mm -hmm. um, but I need to do it more. Whom, whom did you want to be growing up? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, huh. I wanted to be Steven Spielberg. Seriously? <laughs> yes. For real? <laughs> yes. Why? I saw E.T. Okay. I, how young I was. I'm, I was young. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> that was the coolest movie ever. I wanted to uh, make movies like Steven Spielberg. I even kind of wrote a couple of scripts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> did you love his imagination his creativity yes, or yes, what? I, yes i love his imagination i love how he makes movies um i love the topics that he chooses mm -hmm. um i think they're on on another level mm -hmm. okay but but otherwise you know i wanted to make comic books and a bunch of other things and I wanted to be an archaeologist I still do why so, why archaeologist um you know that bug bit me in high school <laughs> <laughs> and I just love all things ancient yeah you know, know what I noticed that um all realist artists I talk to, they love ancient history. You know, uh, well, I love ruins. I uh, like I traveled to Rome several times just to see Pompeii and. Oh God, God. I want to go there. Yeah. Oh, I still yeah. want to go there. Uh, I just am fascinating, fascinated with what people could do two, three, four thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's so beautiful, so perfectly done. Like I know. Mm -hmm. And then artwork from that many years ago. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, mm -hmm. you know, more specifically, um, uh, abs absolutely obsessed with Egypt. Egypt? Okay. Yeah, I've been to Egypt. Okay. W what do you love about Egypt? Oh, God. I love Anubis? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing specific. I just love the culture. I love um, the artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, I well, actually, my husband and I went to Egypt in '98, and the smells, the sounds, the people, uh, all the ancient structures and artifacts. Mm -hmm. amazing I mean it, and that culture was so different from any other mm -hmm. on earth back then or now I can so. tell you what I love about Egypt it, it, it's uh, you know visual stylization of um, objects things animals uh, I absolutely love how they stylized cats <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Yes, I'm a huge cat lover. <laughs> um, but, you know, the fact that we know so much about them, mm -hmm. that so much had survived mm -hmm. over, you know, thousands of years, that's fascinating too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. What's your favorite place? I want to say home, of course. Um, Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> although i like east texas too i, I know you asked me why <laughs> why east texas in the middle of nowhere uh because it's peaceful it's quiet mm -hmm. uh, relaxing okay very good <laughs> <laughs> um can you give uh, one piece of advice um for artists in particular yes do it do it often do what you love no excuses 
I mean, seriously. <laughs> Otherwise, you will show attitude. <laughs> well, attitude is good. <laughs> uh, it's just that, you know, people really uh, uh, hang on to all those excuses. Like, like I mentioned, you know, I don't have the right tools or I don't have time or I don't have mm -hmm. uh, models. You know, mm -hmm. I can... And I do take pictures of everything around me. I take pictures of clouds, flowers, animals, objects, anything. And, you know, I don't know. One day I might include those in my drawings. One day I might draw a bird or I might draw an animal. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. I, I'm inspired by everything around me. So, yeah, there's really no excuse. I mean, you can go outside and just doodle. Mm -hmm. Doodle is practice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, I mean, just just do it. Okay. And don't uh, probably mo most importantly, don't compare yourself to others. That's probably the worst thing you can do to yourself and your confidence, um, because. It someone better than you mm -hmm. always um so just find that thing you love to draw or paint and just do it mm -hmm. and be honest with yourself very good uh you can i just want to say you can do it okay. if that's your passion you can do it very good. And don't worry about what people say. Very good. <laughs> okay. It's such a pleasure to have you on my show, Tanya. Oh, it's so nice talking to you <laughs> again. <laughs> All right. Take care. You too. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.